Hey, what's up guys? Um, I know last time I saw you on the XV500 build, my little coffee racer here, I said the next video would be a startup and, a, and, a, and, and engine running and all that stuff. And I really meant that. <laughs> but I went home and I thought things through a little bit and I need to do two small things, a um, couple of steps before I, uh, before I can start the engine and use the bike for a little bit, for like a dry build, try a run anyway. Let me explain you why is that. Right, so the main reason uh, why I'm stalling the uh, startup of the engine and the proper build, proper dry build, is because, as I said before, I want to use this bike. Once it's properly built, everything is torqued up and, and connected, I want to start using it uh, for a short period of time, let's say uh, a couple of weeks, you know, something like this, you know, take it outside, take it on the way back to work and forth, and a longer journey and a shorter journey, just to make sure everything is working as it should be. There's no further modifications, no fabrications, no welding needs to be done. It's not blowing fuses, it's handling like it should be before I strip it up for final paint. And obviously that involves riding the bike outside in a damp conditions, most likely rain as well because we live in England. Um, so uh, let me show you what I want to do before I take it uh, outside on the road. The well, first thing I want to do um, is this, the last one of the last modifications, the fabrications. It's a little splash guard over here because, as you can see, underneath the tail section unit, there's my uh, subframe, and there's nothing here. So the water is going to be flicked off from the tire, going all the way here, and landing in my electrical box when it's uh, well in my electrics. It's a perfect uh, entryway for the water to get in there. So what I want to do, I create just a weld like a simple splash guard over here so it's not visible from the outside but kind of goes here and protects um, that little gap that is over here. And the last part I want to do before I take it outside, it's as you know this is all mild steel and it's raw steel. Same with the uh, seat unit we have over here and the front mud guard and a couple of other things. Uh, I haven't primed it, I haven't done anything with that steel because I was still welding it and, and you name it. So just even from sitting in the garage there's a little bit of a surface rust appeared over here because it's a little bit of damp condition. Um, so I want to treat that, prepare the uh, steel for uh, for paint, prime it and once it's primed I'm gonna st it's going to stop from rusting completely and hopefully at that point we can, um, we can move on and uh, we can take it outside and uh, take it for a spin. But there's the first couple of things and hopefully I can achieve this today. So once again guys, apologies, uh, it's not happening today, the startup of the engine. But it just makes sense, because uh, I don't want to torque everything up and, and start to connect everything, put petrol in there and make it all, all working. Just to tear it apart later on because I won't be able to take it outside because of the uh, rust water conditions and all that. You know, front mudguard needs painting, su uh, subframe needs painting, seat unit needs painting. Well priming anyway to stop rust from happening and I need to protect all the electrics from uh, being attacked by the water from the rear tire from the road. Uh, but I will do my best uh, to finish these little things today, um, give you some tips uh, to prepare the road still as well for paint or prime anyway and uh, crack open a few more cold ones and we uh, hopefully after today we're gonna start making it ready for a, for a fire up to start the engine. Bear with me guys, once again apologies is not starting it today, but it just makes sense, right? Let's do this. Right, so the first job we're gonna do a little splash guard over here, um, underneath the tail section, the little hump, coffee racer hump, to protect all the electrics underneath the tray over there, so the tire when it flings water here, it doesn't go all the way there by being stopped by, by that little splash guard. And I like to start all the fabrication with a piece of paper, a piece of cardboard, whatever works for you. Basically, you can make it from a single sheet of paper, you can make it from a single sheet of steel. Right, so after uh, some time, we came up with this, which is a bit ugly, <laughs> but I'm going to make it from one piece now. Well, anyway, that's a uh, shape I kind of came up with underneath there, kind of seems to reflect the best what's, uh, what's happening underneath that, underneath that tail section. There we go. And this is what we've got. Which, incidentally, it's... <laughs> it's 
It's Peter Chris, drummer from KISS, right? <laughs> right, let's cut this bad boy out and we're gonna mount it underneath uh, tail unit in the paper section first. Right guys, this is where we are. A little bit of uh, final adjustment is needed because it's rubbing here. But other than that, it's a um, pretty good fit. Obviously, that will need to be bent a little slightly more, but I can do it with metal and then as you can see, it's not visible from the sides. And when water is going to come all the way up here, I'm hoping it's going to hit that and it's going to drip down back to the tire and go over there. Uh, but not into the electrical box. That's the plan anyway. Right, by the magic of teleportation, we got our cut shape piece cut from a quite fixed steel and clean up ready to roll. Now we just need to use some fire extinguisher and some hammer power to fit this thing inside there. Yeah, wish me luck. <laughs> Let's do this. guys so it's two hours later and this is pretty much what I ended up um, after two hours of bashing that thing uh, with hammers on a vise on the fire extinguisher so it's a one piece of uh, sheet metal uh, bent to as what you can see that kind of funky shape uh, this extra curvature over here this way is to accommodate for the actual tail piece um, for the frame, the subframe I've made, and that fits perfectly into the uh, seat section. Uh, and I think for a for a guy who doesn't know what he's doing half the time, I think that's a pretty good result. Let me show you. So that's my uh, tail section, and that fits in near enough perfect. Squeeze it in here gently, and I was tapping it and tapping it a little bit by little, you know, so all the edges over here. Um, it's near enough perfect fit, there's no gaps anywhere. All I need to do is just weld it across here, put a couple of uh, spot welds first just to prompt it on the bike and then just gently uh, weld it so it creates even seal and doesn't distort. Let me show you how it looks on the bike before we uh, tuck it in place. So uh, there we go, I'm really happy with that look as well. Obviously it needs to go slightly up like this but as you can see it's near enough perfect. It's a one piece of uh, steel sheet it's not visible anywhere from around and from underneath hopefully the water when it's gonna hit that is gonna just goes down it's got this nice wavy uh, curvature over here which I'm really like hopefully that is a good enough protection from uh, electrics which are living over here and that actually looks pretty good once it's all painted in the same color obviously with no gap over here because that's gonna be welded just held together with a piece of tape right now, but once it's all uniform, I think that should really uh, put another level to this fabrication. Another little piece like this. Very happy with that so far. As you can see I'm welding that in sections, um, the reason I'm doing it this way in sections and not the whole thing through because it's it's still quite thin metal and I don't want it to distort, the more heat you put, it, put on in one place the more it's going to distort as you as you probably know. So at the moment it's just um, sections like this and I'm coming back alternative ways and hopefully uh, we can avoid all the distorting parts. but. 
let's hope uh, we're gonna carry on this way because so far I'm quite happy with those welds which is very surprising all right guys I'm gonna shut up and carry on Mission accomplished. You can't really see it until you go down here. And even from here, I think it looks pretty pretty good. Well, will be once it's painted anyway. Rock and roll guys, couldn't be any happier with that really. I mean for the uh, two three hours of work that it took me with no skill and no proper tools of doing that. Pretty happy with that, uh, I'll be honest with you. Rock and roll. Let's move on and prime all this uh, metal parts before we run out of the day. Right, now it's all into place. The last fabrication has been done. Well that on the bike, happy with it. Moving on. Uh, just quickly, what I need to do right now with all that raw steel. It's a mild steel I've been using um, for that uh, all the fabrication I've been using here. And when you buy it uh, straight from a steel place, <laughs> whatever you buy it from, it comes covered in some kind of uh, oil uh, residue, kind of, uh, it's, it's, it's coated with, uh, basically they do it so they protect it from rusting. Once you remove that oil, whatever that is on it, some protective coating, you expose the mild steel uh, for rust, basically. And, um, and that is happening very quickly, as you can see, uh, because I've been working this and uh, on and off, little patches like this they already when I touch my finger has some moisture on it probably and it's picking up uh, places like here you know it's picking up rust straight away even he hasn't seen any rain he just sits here in the garage so we need to deal with it before we take a bike on the road and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to live with it for another two or three weeks so the way I like to deal with raw steel which is unpainted first thing I do I degrease it properly I use um, paint thinners or some specific degreasers, they got spray degreaser, I got 5 litre tap of paint thinners, heavy harsh chemicals, use respirator for it, very important. Uh, to get rid of all the oil residue, whether you're handling that with your fingers, whether you got some residue from oil from the from around here, or whether that is coated from a, a factory when it comes up when you buy it. Then I'm going to sand it down to remove all the imperfections and to create some grooves so the primer can actually stick to it. And once everything is sanded down, let's say uh, 200 grits or something like this, uh, I'm going to degrease it yet again uh, with the same um, thinners or degreaser agent I used before. Why degrease it twice in between sanding? Simply because if you sand it first with all the oil, all the protective coating, all the grease and contaminants, you will basically work that grease and all the uh, protective coating that came from a factory into that steel. When you sand it down with the uh, sandpaper and you got grease on it, you're gonna work that grease, not much of it, but still you're gonna work it into these grooves. And then that obviously will stop um, any kind of primer or paint adhesing to that properly. Uh, so degrease, sand it down and degrease again. That's how I do it. Uh, there are probably some professionals out there tell me that is a stupid way of doing that but I've been doing that for quite a few, few years and, uh, and uh, it works for me so if it works for me it don't need to work for you but I'm I'm happy with that I'm gonna follow my process <laughs> all right guys I'm not gonna bore you too much with it I'm gonna skip forward teleport and show you what is done Well, that was uh, that was some work. I tell you that it stinks here of uh, paint thinners, but I'm happy with the results so far. Getting there, so everything has been uh, degreased. Then I uh, brush it with uh, sandpaper, uh, sand it down. End up using 60 grit if you're wondering. Uh, anything else wasn't, wasn't really cutting through that. I don't want to go as coarse as you know 40, but 60 is just enough. 
I think, and uh, that's not by all means is a preparation for body working. I just want to get it uh, raw steel, might still out of the way, you know, prime it so it's, uh, you know, so it doesn't corrode anymore, so it doesn't rust. Because I'm gonna use the bike uh, as soon as I, uh, as soon as I get it started. But yeah, uh, especially happy with this little piece. It's, uh, it's got a nice uh, kind of brushed aluminium look to it. Uh, I ain't gonna stay like this though. But it's uh, it's looking good, it's looking smooth, all is clean. Don't handle it too much before I apply primer to it. Um, but yeah, that is the next step. Monster session in the garage yet again. But we're getting there, another step closer. Let's uh, put some tack coats of primer on it, mix it up, and uh, see how it looks in the uniform shape. Right, guys, it really, really stinks here. But I'm done with priming. I uh, put like two wet coats of, uh, of a primer and a one dust coat. I mean, one dust coat and two wet coats, heavy wet coats. Uh, so everything is sealed. There's no uh, mild steel raw metal sticking out anywhere and it's all drying, curing, whatever it's doing. I'm going to leave it alone for a day or two maybe. And then I'm thinking I'll put probably just a, like a guide coat of black over it because I'm going to start body working it after after that but I won't bother filming this just a quick guide coat of black just to seal the primer in and then we're gonna stick it back on the bike and hopefully next video <laughs> hopefully next video fingers crossed we're gonna start this bad boy see what happens well until then guys thank you very much for watching rock hard have a beer and I'll see you next time